My name is Elvis. Welcome to Power Your Story Season 9, a podcast from After School Matters and Creator Imposter Studio in Chicago. This season, our theme is experience. Thank you for listening. Enjoy the show. Hey there, it's Program Director for Power Your Story, Andrea Klunder. This incredible interview with award-winning jazz percussionist and teaching artist Ernie Adams was originally recorded in 2020. We wanted to let you know that you will also hear a slight guest appearance from one of Elvis's younger siblings toward the end of the interview. We left it in because we thought it was kind of cute. We'll link to Ernie's website in the show notes in the episode description in your app and at PowerYourStoryPodcast.com. Welcome to Power Your Story Podcast. My name is Jonas. Today we're talking with Aaron Adams. Beautiful. Nice to meet everyone. Really looking forward to it. Me gusta oír hispanicos and pop. Hispanico pop or just regular pop music? Hispanic. And como español, I listen to Luis Fonsi all the time. Y Carlos Rivera. Fantastico. That's great, man. Mm -hmm. Why do you enjoy this music so much, if I can ask? ¿Por qué es, es su favorita? Because music is to relax our bodies and... We can start working and hear it and anything you can do. Yeah. And don't just listen to the music that is fed to you on the radio because that music that you hear on the radio, it's programmed. They're basically telling you this is what you should listen to like this because it's always here. And we, we chose an artist that really looks great and we dress them up perfectly and the videos are very cool. But discover stuff that isn't always there. It's like McDonald's. It's like, you know, you can always get McDonald's. And mm. I bet you, maybe you like McDonald's, but there's other foods out there that you haven't discovered because you're always going to McDonald's. Oh. You know oh. what I'm saying? Same oh. thing with musica. It's, it's el mismo. The same with music. So don't be used by these record companies and by the radio stations. Mm. I'm sorry if I'm going off topic, but I think it's important just to have a mind of your own. My question is, what music have you been listening to? You know, the music I listen to, that's like a question like, what is your favorite music? To me, that's like asking a, a parent, which, which one of your kids is your favorite kid? Which one of your children is your favorite? For me, you know, I listen to, to hip hop, but I also listen to jazz. It all depends on the moment. I like some classical. I like some, some Afro-Cuban. I like a lot of different styles of music. It all depends. So what I've been listening to, yes, is it's different styles, many different styles. Like I said, Latin, jazz, hip hop, um, old school funk, some some Hispanico. It all depends. Oh, it's just like in the movie from Trolls World Tour. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what kinds of drums do you play? Well, I love Tama drums, but that's a specific brand of drums. I play the American drum set, but I also play world percussion. I also play conga drums. I, I play the African djembe. I play the uh, Caribbean conga drums. I play percussion from Brazil, again, from Africa, from the Caribbean. I play percussion from Asia. I play a, a Korean drum. I play Japanese percussion, Chinese. Yeah, I play a lot of different styles of percussion instruments and drums, but when it comes to drum sets, I play jazz drums, pop and studio drums. I also play rock drums. I like rock music as well. I have a question. My name is Aaliyah Rich. <laughs> uh, you was describing like Afro, I forgot what you were saying. Caribbean, maybe Afro-Caribbean? Yeah, yes. What was that? Afro-Caribbean is dealing with the music, the culture of the African slaves that were brought to the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And when the slaves came over, they brought their culture and their instruments, their religion, many things. And so the music that resulted from that was the mixture of African music, mainly their instruments to percussion with European harmonies and melodies. And when that happened in the Caribbean, you ended up with rumba, ended up with abaqua, different Latin percussion. When it came to the United States, you had the African rhythms from those tribes that were brought to the States. A lot of Nigerian, they were blended with the European rhythms and the United States just went through a civil war. 
So that was the marching. And so you had African rhythms with the European instruments mixed with some of the Caribbean rhythms brought in and you created jazz here in the United States, the blues and jazz. And then you had, again, Afro-Cuban and Caribbean, Afro-Latin and Caribbean. And then in Brazil, you ended up with samba, samba because of the Portuguese with the African slaves. So uh, that's what I meant by Afro-Caribbeans, uh, music and culture created by Africans in the Caribbean. Oh, wow. Great yeah, question. Cause, yeah, because I'm a really huge fan. So I like to listen to different types of music, especially um, jazz music. And I like to listen to like lo-fi hip-hop music. Beautiful. You know, hip-hop was a natural progression of American music. A lot mm -hmm. of people put it down, but I think hip hop, like most great fashion and foods, culture came from the streets, came from the, the inner cities, some of the poorer areas of the streets. And hip hop came from there in the Bronx, right? Jazz came in from the streets in New Orleans. Tango music in Argentina were from the poor. And at first the, the people from above, the, the richer people looked down at that music, thinking it's a, it's a lesser music and culture, but eventually it ended up taking over and the, the people in power ended up liking the music. And hip hop is one of the longest lasting musics, uh, pop music to ever be created. So really? yes, yes, it is. It's been happening since really from the eighties. And you should check out the history of hip hop. You know, it started in, in the Bronx from a lot of the gangs and, and they, instead of fighting, they ended up just spending time musically together and battling as musicians. Yeah, again, it came from the streets, came out of a necessity. I cannot wait to hear more about you with your music and as you, in the years from now, as you travel and see the world, because that's the type of attitude it takes for someone like you to say, I love different things and discovering new things. There's a world of stuff out there for you. Yeah, that's true. Because when I heard you like to listen to like different types of music, like my eyes really pop. Good. <laughs> like, that's great. I thought I was the only one. <laughs> just like I always like to listen to different things like classic music yes. and like classicals, hip hop. I try listening to rock music, country music. I try listening to dubstep. I listen to all sorts of music. Not so much for the radio, but also for record players, because I have a record. Sure. Yeah. So a lot of things that my parents love, especially 60s and 50s, 40s, 30s. I love swing music. That's like my number one favorite. But Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any recommended artists to check out? Oh, yeah. There's a ton of great New music, a lot of different artists that that have been around that perhaps you haven't you haven't heard. Are you familiar familiar with Robert Glasper? Mm. He's actually mm -hmm. very popular today. He is a pianist, piano player, a jazz piano player, who is also very influential in hip hop. He actually was a writer and I believe producer for a lot of the Kendrick Lamar recordings. Really? And if you listen to yes, if you listen to Kendrick Lamar's last few recordings, they had a lot mm -hmm. of jazz chords and different things happening in there. It was a little more in depth is going back to live musicians again. And check out Robert Glasper, G-L-A-S-P-E-R. And you'll have the jazz mixed with even a little bit of classical, but definitely mixed with some hip hop and some funk. It's very beautiful music. The only <laughs> thing I like as much as listening and discovering new great music and discovering, like when I travel, is discovering new great foods from around the world, too. Me, too. <laughs> to, me, to me, food and music are very similar. Music feeds your soul, food feeds your body, right? Mm -hmm. Like when you eat a good food, sometimes it's so good it makes you dance, right? You just go, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> so, yeah. But again, when you travel, Ali, if traveling is going to make you grow so much. Music for me, you know, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is smaller than Chicago, and I never traveled. I went away to college in Texas, but after I got into music, music has taken me to 48 countries, and I've learned so much about it. The, you know, there's an expression that says travel is the enemy of ignorance, bigotry, 
and prejudice, I believe. But when you travel, you grow and mature so much. And someone like you who is just hungry for new, new, different things, get ready to do some traveling. It's going to change your life. It's true. It's just like I'm trying to like discover new plans to like travel across the United States and like maybe go to Florida or even like Tennessee. Is there any place you, you ever was your favorite? You know, every country has a has such a a unique, beautiful characteristic about it. I remember being in India. I played a jazz festival there and I met a gentleman who really enjoyed our music. And he turned out to be a textile magnate, someone who who he built an empire on clothes, on making clothes for people. He was a he was a billionaire. And I believe he was a prince as well. And he had a 12 story home and it had the second largest jade collection in Asia. And he had an airport in his backyard. And he was also attempting to break the world. He was in his 60s, attempting to break the world's highest manned balloon. So he was going to go up in a balloon in space. And he was trying to break that record. And he was such an inspiration because even at 60 years old, he was discovering and trying new things. So yeah, India was just the, the foods, the sounds, the smells, everything was just so new and different. Yeah, but then being in South America, too, was beautiful. You know, I remember being in Santiago, Chile. After sound check for a concert that night, I was walking through the city of Santiago, and I started to go outside the city, just getting lost, to just to discover it. And I ended up at a place in a part of town that was all German in Chile, a South American country. It was all German. The, the street signs were in German. It was a versed house, so it was like a sausage house. Everything was in German. I felt like I was in Germany. And I got back to the hotel and I described it. And he said, oh, you went to a spot in Santiago, Chile, where many of the German Nazis fled to after World War II. They came across and they fled and they, and they ended up in a spot there in Chile. Just experiences like that I will never forget. And it really has enriched my life being in Japan or being in Baku, Azerbaijan or in Greece. I met my wife in Spain. She's from she's French from Paris, but I met her when I was in Spain. So I'm going to see you 10 years from now. And I'm going to say, hey, aren't you that girl who listens to different styles of music? And you're going to tell me all the different countries that you've been to and all the different things. And you're going to make me very happy. Yeah. Yeah. Your experiences is like sounds amazing. It's like a dream that I wish I can just do just like have like travel to just different countries seeing spain and just like things like that i hope that will come true and it's like it's such an amazing thing that you've been experiencing something like this well you can make it happen read up on different countries read up on different experiences from people who have traveled perhaps you know you might be able to do some teaching or some type of experience where they need a person like you to teach in another country. English has a second language. I know people who've gone to Japan just to teach and ended up working there and living there. So don't just wish, make it happen. You're the type of spirit that'll make it happen. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, um, I'm D'Angelo. I got to ask you a question. How did you first get into playing music? Well, first of all, nice to meet you, D'Angelo. It's a pleasure of mine to be here with you. I was a baby in the crib. My father said that when I was in the crib, he would turn on music. And whenever I was in the crib, I would kick my legs, move my arms around, dancing to the music as a baby in my, in my baby crib. And he said when he would turn the music off, you know, I would stop moving. So after a couple of years, he bought me a drum set when I was three years old. He couldn't even afford a, a whole drum set. And there was a guy in the neighborhood who showed me how to play. There were the Latin percussionists in the park playing, and I would watch and listen and try to copy them. And then in grade school, I started taking lessons, music lessons, drum lessons. In high school, I was, I was also taking lessons, and I started playing professionally when I was 15 years old. I was a junior in high school, and I would get hired for 25, 30, 40, 50 bucks to play at a, at a wedding or a, a party. 
And then I got a scholarship to a music school and I went to college and studied. And after that, I was playing back in my hometown in Milwaukee, started playing in Chicago. And then uh, I started going on tour at the age of 26. I started playing around the world. Sometimes I'd be on the road for, for six or eight, 10 months. So yeah, I started young when I was in music. And just because my father said that I moved a lot to the music. So I think it was the best gift he ever gave me. Who inspired you when you were growing up? Back when I was growing up in the 60s, there were television programs that would put live music on. You would see a ton of great jazz musicians. And so watching these artists from New York and Los Angeles from around the world play music on television was inspiring. And every so often there would be a great drummer. In particular, on television, there was a drummer by the name of Buddy Rich, who was very inspiring. But I also got a chance to see other jazz drummers who were playing with people like Miles Davis, jazz trumpet player, and John Coltrane, these drummers, Tony Williams and Elvin Jones. But also, again, people in the neighborhood, people that were playing music in the area. So, yeah, a lot of different musicians and artists. Thank goodness at that time, there were there was a lot of music on TV. I think I got one more question. What has been the hardest part of your career? Well, I think the hardest part as a musician for me is being able to balance family and time with my with my music, my career, my passion. I think something that would help anybody, time management. Yeah, learning how to, to manage your time is so important. That's something that I'm learning to do, having priorities. You know, since being able to balance my family with my career means that I don't have time to watch sports. I used to love sports, but I don't have the time anymore because I can either watch a game for three hours or I can get work done or I can spend time with my family. It all depends. So learning how to manage your time and your money, that's what it is. Managing your time correctly, D'Angelo, then also your money correctly. And now that I have a family, I have to really manage both really well. So that's the hardest part is balancing my time with family and music. I will pass it to uh, Gennaro. It's good seeing you, Ernie. D'Angelo, it's nice to meet you. I look forward to seeing you again. Can I ask real quick, what kind of music do you play? I like Mary J. Blige and Bobby Brown and what else? Katy Perry. All right. That's your prerogative. Get it? Bobby Brown, my prerogative? Yes. All right. D'Angelo, thank you, man. Nice meeting you. Okay, thank you. Hello, Ernie. How you doing? I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing great. So, like, I know you're a musician, right? So Yes, I am. I also produce music. And Beautiful. Do you make music digitally or just live instruments only? I started out learning to play music on actual instruments. But then in the 80s, electronic music, the synthesizer was created and drum machines came along. And all those musicians who were not able to play those ended up not working. So luckily, I I was able to embrace working with drum machines. And now I work with, I use Logic Pro, Logic Pro X. I use this program to make music. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've created music for short movies. I've done movie scores using that, documentaries. I also do the music for the TV show Empire, which is canceled. But there was a TV show called Empire. Mm -hmm. I was playing music for them. But yeah, I do music using electronics and live. All electronics are all live. Yeah, I think is a a justifiable means of creating music with electronics. It really helps to know the instruments themselves, too. So if you could do both, that would be great. What do you plan on doing with this in the future? Well, I was thinking of being a video producer because... I do like a variety of content, not just only music, but I do like gaming. I do chatting with other people. I do a lot of things. Like I do like like variety and entertainment, different stuff. Good for you, man. As long as you get your work done. And if that becomes your work, that's like me with my music. Man, why not get paid for doing your passion? Right. So I'm happy for you. Congratulations, man. But make it Thank happen. You. Don't just don't just make it just fun and games. This is going to take you right doing more work, you know that you're really succeeding when it's not just fun anymore. You're going to be so involved in it that you're going to be like, man, I need a break. Right now, you never need a break from video games. 
Right. I'll have to pass it. Elvis, thank you so much for your interaction. I really appreciate it. Man, thank you. Great interviewing. Hi, my name is Elvis. Elvis, how are you? I'm doing good. What do you think is important to follow your dreams, even when other people don't believe in you? Why do I think it's important for people to follow their dreams? First of all, it's so important to follow your dreams because I think dreams are things inside of you, thoughts and ideas inside of you that are trying to come out. Your dreams are trying to tell you this is what you need to do. And you do not want to be 70, 80 years old at the end of your life going, I wonder what would have happened if I really followed my dreams. And I don't care what job you have. If you're not doing something that you really enjoy, you won't be happy. No matter how much money you make, I know guys who are multimillionaires, people who are multimillionaires who are not as happy as I am. They have a lot of money, but they're, they're, they're alone, or you can tell that they are, they're not happy in life. When you follow your dreams, you are fulfilling something within yourself. And following your dreams, you also mature as a, as a person, as a human being. Following your, your dreams teaches you to be strong, no matter what people say. It teaches you to stand on your own and to find out and to learn about yourself and to grow. So, yes, you have to follow your dreams. <laughs> That's okay. All right. That's all right. Yes, I've, got a, I've got a nine-year-old. That's why I'm in the car. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> all right. Okay. But, yeah, man, please, everyone listening to, listening to this, you won't be happy until you follow your dreams. That's mm-hmm. the truth. And I don't just mean to... Have fun with it. I mean, you have to live it. You have to live your dream. You've got to to do everything you can to take that in and to learn about it and to grow it. Yeah. So my last question is, what is your message to young people who are struggling now? My message to young people who are struggling now, perhaps because of COVID-19 or just being a young person. It's tough being a young person. My advice is to always... Always try to to stay positive. Always try to look for the good side of things. Surround yourself with good friends and good family. Make sure that you are taking care of yourself, getting enough sleep, eating well. Hot Cheetos and a Slurpee or soda does not mean eating well. Okay? Little things like that, man. No drinking, no drugs. Right now is a tough time, and we have to do all we can to really take care of ourselves and to stay positive. So stay positive. Think about your dreams, the things that you want to do and make them happen. Spend some time by yourself thinking of what you want to do. Write those ideas down. Be positive. Think about what your future, what you want your future to be like. But the main thing is to stay positive and always connect with good, good people. Yeah. Well, thanks for giving advice and and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Great job. Thank you, Ernie. We appreciate you. Is there anything else you would like to share with us today? Yes, I do. I do have something else I'd like to share. All of you young people, you're the future. You are really the future. I think the way things are right now, it could be a lot better. It should be a lot better. A lot of people have screwed it up. And I think now it's time for the young people to do the right thing, to smarten up, work hard, and try to make life better, not just just for themselves, but for everybody, for the world. You have that power. I want you to realize that you have the power to make change. You have the power to influence others. Just because you're young does not mean that you're insignificant. But again, you've got to be smart. You've got to do the right things. You've got to work hard. Please realize your importance because you do have, you do have the power to make the world a better place. Wow, that's a wonderful message. Thank you everyone for listening from Power Your Story podcast. I hope you're doing well and stay safe and have a great day. Thank you. Power Your Story podcast is produced by Chicago High School students with production support from After School Matters and the Created Imposter Studio. Our theme music is by Gennaro Jackson, a.k.a. DJ Sparks. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube as Power Your Story Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.